What is up everyone, Super Tom here and as you've already read from the title, today I will be helping you decide whether to choose Kazuha or Okay, never mind, it's Yula everyone, we simp for Yula, that's the end of the video, thank you very much for watching. Whoops, that was a bit biased, sorry guys, let's try that again. What's up everyone, Super Tom here and our wait is finally over. Our cryo waifu is about to come out. She's beautiful, she's cute, she's elegant and she has huge... Oh my god, can I just make a video without being biased so that my viewer can watch in peace? Jokes aside guys, here's a disclaimer. Normally, my best suggestion would be that you should always summon for the character that you think you'd like or enjoy using the most because that's the whole point of playing your games, right? To enjoy yourself. And if you're someone like me who's kind of like waifu over meta most of the time, I'm just going to spend everything for Eula all day long. However, if you're a free-to-play player and is struggling to find a suitable character for your dream team, then I'm here to help. So, what we'll do is we'll look at the pros and cons of both characters in this video. Now, I won't go through in depth into the skills description because I've already covered in the other videos of mine, which you can come back and check it out. So, without further ado, let's just jump right in. First, let's take a look at Eula as for her pros. Number one, from the look and comparison, her attack speed seems to be faster than most Claymore user. Like looking at some of the main DPS Claymore here like D Luke and Razor, her attack speed seems to be faster which can potentially earn you higher DPS but that will also support her burst skill as well which charges her large sword once every 0.1 second for every normal attack, elemental skills or burst that she hits her opponent so the faster she can swing her claymore the more she'll be able to charge up those stats secondly talking about burst damage let's say that at talent level one her base scaling would be around 612 percent however she gets to stack up those light sword each stacks has 75 percent bonus damage to it and let's say that she reached a maximum of number of stack which is 30 now the total damage she can potentially dish out is around two 2862% and that's an insane amount of damage. Taking that up to talent level 8 which is where many players work, that damage is now around 4866%. Now I don't even have to tell you how much of a damage that is. Thirdly, she's going to be a main DPS character focusing on physical damage and already has physical resistance increase for herself and resistant debuff on her opponent built in her kit because that's what her elemental skills give. Therefore, you can actually use her to solo without needing to rely too much on reactions such as super conduct. Number four, her talent gives you 10% chance to receive double product from talent material. So that's a very good additional skill on her. And number five, she's a waifu. Stop it. Get some help. As for her cons, her skill doesn't produce much energy. One tap of her elemental skills only allow you one energy charge and as for the hold, it provides you three energy. So she might have to rely on other character to provide her energy since her burst costs 80 energy which is quite a lot and is also the main source of her damage much like Xiao. And also there are many enemies that has high physical resistance in the game like the Ruin Grade which has 70% physical resistance. Even when you use Superconduct which has like 40% debuff and with her built-in physical resistance debuff of maximum 25%, the enemy will still has 5% resistance and your damage is going to be just slightly better than a Catalyst user. So that's for Eula. Now moving on to our Ether from Inazuma. Oops, it's Kazuha. Hopefully I don't trigger anyone off. For his pros, he's a versatile character that can fit into any team comp he can be either a main damage dealer, a support DPS, or a full support character which is pretty much fits in any spot on a team you're building. He has very good scaling, his passive can boost your party elemental damage to at least 52% if you use a 4 piece very decent set with a normal EM on him of let's say 400 elemental mastery. Thirdly, elemental skill is going to have a buff in patch 1.6 and sword reaction damage will almost be doubled 
so a Nemo character might be the next big thing since Wo can react with multiple elements. And fourth, Kazuha E's skill casts him quite high into the air and he also gets a passive talent that reduces stamina consumption so he will be very useful when exploring in the open world. As for his cons, well to be honest there's not much of a downside to Kazuha that I can see at least as of now. The only thing is that if you're going to be relying on swirl damage it will only be mostly useful when fighting mobs of enemy when each enemy is affected by different elements. It's going to be quite useless fighting slimes and doesn't do much damage to one big enemy. But since that is also getting buffed too in patch 1.6 it might become even more handy. So that's the pros and cons of Kazuha and Yula. Now the question comes for you to answer which characters you're going to be choosing if you are a free to play player who has to be mindful of the primo gems. While for further consideration Yula will be a huge contribution for your team if you need a main DPS. But if you already have a main like you know D look Razor, Rosaria or Sinjan for example there's no need to invest in another physical DPS. And since the Abyss is actually leaning towards shield breaking and reactions physical damage may have a hard time to shine. On the other hand Kazuha is a great character that can do many things at once. If you're a new player or you have happened to miss Venti banner for the second time you might want to pick up Kazuha. He can fit into any team comp and play as many roles as you want. However if you have already invested in Sucrose, Venti or Jean, Kazuha will may just be another character in the team. I think it's going to be better off if you save up for the character that's going to be coming in patch 1.7 who is rumored to be a Ayaka. I'm sure many of you have been waiting for Ayaka since forever so at least you may want to hold off pulling him until you know which characters are going to be coming out in the patch afterwards. Well guys I hope this video have helped you make a better decision on whoever to choose. If you found the video helpful be sure to subscribe to my channel so I post daily content bringing you the latest guides, news and updates on Genshin Impact with some funny moments as a cherry on top. With that, this is Tom wishing everyone a super day.